today on this extra special edition of X-Play. It's X-Play's non-denominational gift guide. We've got the best games of the holiday season for you and your kin. Hold on to your jingle bells. It's game time. Sunday night, hurry! Welcome your ho-ho host, Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. The medication, it is starting to oh, work. wonderful. Oh, hello there. Welcome to our extra festive, non-denominational gift guide. Tis the season of giving. And today, we bring you our list of the best games to buy your cherished ones this holiday season. I cherish myself, and that's why I got me Blood Rain 2 because I'm lonely. <laughs> <laughs> so, whether you worship Allah, Jehovah, or the films of George Lucas, we've got a little something for everyone on your list, regardless of whom or what you pray to. Please, Hanuman, please don't let episode three suck. <laughs> oh, I sure second that, don't I, giant dreidel? Today, we'll show you all the best games for the ever-popular PS2. The powerful and sleek Xbox. The beloved and highly popular PC. And the GameCube. It's not doing so well. Nintendo sure needs a holiday miracle. Isn't that right, Buddha Claus? Even though it's the tiny Tim of the console world, the titles we're about to show you can still fill your GameCube with holiday cheer. I'm filled with bitterness. <laughs> While the GameCube has been a little short on the role-playing games, Tales of Symphonia should satisfy the needy RPG freak a few times over. There's a whole lot of game in this puppy, like 60 hours worth. That should hold all but the most friendless gamers until the bunnies start getting busy later next year. On top of that, combat is in real time, so even those who refrain from RPGs can find something to enjoy here. Except for these big-headed kids who should learn to keep quiet. You're so stupid. Pikmin 2 is the ideal game for people who don't even like games, otherwise known as poop heads. Both visually inventive and shamelessly endearing, the game mixes strategy and puzzle solving with the escapist joy of hurting wild-eyed monochrome flower people to their death. The game may look childish to the imaginatively impaired, but trust us, there's some challenge. And there's some great cooperative multiplayer action. This is one unique game with legs. Little stubby ones that are also cute. Paper Mario, the RPG unlike any other, except the other Paper Mario RPGs. It's upbeat, borderline ridiculous, and an amazing amount of fun. Like most Nintendo products, it's a game that just about anyone can get into, but will provide more than enough challenge before completion. If RPGs always turn them off with earnestness and juveniles, then the Mediterranean stereotypes, bosoms, and fungal whimsy is the perfect antidote. And the humdinger of this GameCube year-end love fest is easily the return of the lady who talks little and hugs less, Sama Saran in Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. If you're someone who played the first one, then this recommendation is redundant with experience. One of the best games of the past few years is back in all its eerie glory. Not so much a shooter as an adventure game with missiles. There's nothing else out there quite like it. Wow, that Metroid Prime 2 Echoes looks just like my career used to be. Full of promise. Oh, with so many good games for this little platform, you'd think someone would be buying it. But they sure aren't. Sorry, little friend. I guess if we've learned one lesson this console cycle, it's that an online component really is important. So maybe you GameCube fans would like a network adapter? Or perhaps just a cup of Mr. Sessler's special cocoa? Smells like aftershave. Oh. Oh. You know, a console without online play is like Hanukkah without a menorah. Pretty dark. Well, don't worry. No platform does online gaming better than Microsoft's chunky console. Mm -hmm. Maybe these games will help put the Xbox into your Xmas. Oh. <laughs>
When a crappy film franchise makes for an excellent game, people pay attention. When it looks this good, you pay even more attention. The Chronicles of Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay is a marvel of technology and game design. A stealth game from the first person perspective, it's heavy on ambiance and violence with a touch of horror. Now it's a mature game for those that love dystopia and grit. Hey, John, so you Don't let the gas man's starring role turn you off. Yeah, it is a little old, but what was amazing in January is just as amazing today. Ninja Gaiden is initially a game with more wow power than you can imagine. Beautiful, fast, and furious. It's one of the best cases for the Xbox's power. Beyond that, it's a game that demands skill and an intense desire to kick ass and look damn good doing it. Not too hot for beginners, but a must-have for everyone else. Fable may have taken much longer to come out than it does to play, but it's definitely one of the system's standout titles for the year, adopting a good or evil branching path. Hey, you can't do that! <laughs> this is a fun one for all skill levels to play through multiple times, if only to mess around more with the reactions of the populace. Come on. Get married. Let's get hitched. Kill your spouse. <laughs> grow horns. Be a goody two-shoes or experiment like they do in college. Make a great couple of blokes. Couple of blokes together. It's all here. The most gorgeous man I've ever laid eyes on. The best case for Knights of the Old Republic 2 is, well, Knights of the Old Republic. The amazing gameplay is all there with a new story. That means last year's best game is more or less here. Plus, you start as a Jedi, and those who completed the first outing will find it influencing this chapter. So, if they liked KOTOR, do we need to connect the dots? So, yeah. Halo 2. Could he possibly make any more noise? I guess so. It's, well, you know, Halo 2. Most definitely so, right. after playing Halo 1 and... Raggedy ass flames. Ooh, rah. Come on, do you really need me to spell it out for you? Halo 2. There's this. And this. Plus, there's online, which is so... I mean, look. Look, it's just so... Are you here? Do you know someone who actually owns an Xbox? Halo 2. I need a weapon right this way. You want it. Tell that to them. They want it. End of story. I just can't stop playing Halo 2. It's like we were made for each other. Morgan, if you love Halo 2 so much, why don't you marry it? Unfortunately, 11 states voted against it. I guess my love of Master Chief will just have to remain illegal in Oregon. You know, whether you believe in a higher power or in nothing but the inky blackness of your own meaningless existence, we'll have exciting PS2 reviews for you when we come back. Oh, Adam. Do you like my sweater? It makes me want to gouge my eyes out with a pen knife. Oh. Coming up, stuff your stocking with Games of Goodwill on the PS2. Once again, two people roasting on an open fire. Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. I got that Michael Powell something to thank it for keeping the airways nice and bland. So sweet. Oh, oh, it's you. Please, join us. We were just about to stuff our stockings with love for all mankind. Welcome back to our non-denominational gift guide. We're showing you all the games you should be buying for that special gamer in your life. Let's see. I bought gifts for all the friends on my online list. I got things for Adam underscore Sessler, Mally's, Obvious Plant 65, oh, and F***head 2000. How is F***head doing? He's doing great. You know, good friends always warm the cockles of my heart. And we have something that'll warm your cockles, too. Yes, like a rich cornucopia stuffed oh. with violent content, the PS2 has more swell games than we know what to do with. So no matter what your special gamer is into, We've got something for him. Or her. <laughs> we sure ho 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 you like them. Oh.
Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Take the fanboy staple and put a higher number on it, and you have a recipe for saliva drenched desire. But beyond sycophancy, there's a pretty darn interesting game here. It's a prequel, so it answers many questions and offers up some truly meticulous gameplay. Many more aspects of stealth and covert militarism come into play here. Camo, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and sustenance. As for the patient and fans of the series, but well worth it. <laughs> Katamari Damashi is, simply put, unlike anything else. Yeah, it's Japanese weird, but it's good Japanese weird. Tactically inventive and deceptively simple, this is one of the year's biggest surprises and is shockingly compulsive. Even if you're not a gamer, this one's gonna get anyone interested. Plus, it's 20 bucks. What more do you need? Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal is easily the best game of its type since the last Ratchet and Clank. Part platformer, part action game, it's fast paced, elegantly designed, and an absolute pleasure to play. But it is dangerously addictive. It might look youth oriented, but the writing is for an older base, and the fun can be enjoyed by everyone but those who cry during Gilmore Girls. It's near perfect and highly satisfying. Okay, so you're thinking about getting Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Question is, are they mature looking enough to get away with playing it? Are they able to tolerate a moral spin cycle as you eradicate cops, pedestrians, and drug dealers? Does any type of music from the early 90s make them feel pleasant? Do they know anything about the game? Does this look fun to you or your gift receiver? Do they own a PS2? Well then, get the game. You know, nothing compliments a quiet, snowy night filled with the smell of cinnamon and evergreens like the sight of a man shooting people to death. I like that Katamari Damashi. It's perfect for everyone in your life from the stoners, to the ravers, to the kindergartners. Don't go away. When we come back, we have a hearth full of mirth and merriment waiting for you. But right now, I'm gonna light the menorah. Oh, Adam, a lightsaber will only cauterize those candles. That's why the bleeding arm scene in the cantina scene of Star Wars Episode Four breaks with continuity. We're nerds, aren't we? And complete tools, too. <sighs> Up next, what could be more PC than a non-denominational holiday show? Why, PC games, of course. Seriously, who bogarted the eggnog? It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Oh, I love it this time of year when the fresh snow softly dapples our shoulders. Get out of the shot! Out! Get out! Oh. Welcome back to X-Play's non-denominational holiday gift guide. We're back to show you the best games for all your favorite consoles. And we're filled with all the spirits of the season. Eggnog? Plum wine, mm. cooking cherry. Mm. It's times like these that you want to surround yourself with family. Friends. And heartwarming things like Grand Theft Auto, Halo 2, and that game where you knock people's heads off with a shovel. It was banned in Australia. Oh. And speaking of Australia, a shout out to all the Aboriginal viewers out there. Tis the season to enjoy your tribal gods. Hey, it is. Mm. You know, on these cold winter nights, I like to curl up next to a warm PC. And if you do too, maybe you should buy one of these games. Remember The Sims, or as I like to call it, the land of never-ending expansion packs? Well, it did end to make way for the beautifully refurbished Sims 2. It's still the same game at heart, but now it's 3D. So now all the hijinks, ribaldry, and intestinal evacuation is more fluidly animated, allowing the little avatars to make a better case for unemployment. 
If you know a Sims fan and their PC can handle the processing heft, go right ahead and let them lose their life through others. Total War series has always been impressive in its ambitions, but faltered in the execution. Spirits of the dead cry out for blood. This is so not the case with Rome Total War. The turn-based section of the game can indulge the budding Caligulas with politics and taxes. The real-time section is an amazing depiction of the immensity of Roman-era battles. Complex, but accessible. Pretty much, you just have to like togas. There is no shame! And someone better like furry-footed emotional halflings to appreciate battle for Middle-earth. Two campaigns, one good, one evil, offers both intimate bloodletting and full-scale orc eviscerating carnage. From the makers of Command & Conquer Generals, the game has a good pedigree to make it a fine capper to four years of indulgence in Peter Jackson's cacophonous gay fantasia. But what might be on the minds of most PC gamers capitalizing on the holidays for material acquisitions is Half-Life 2. Your hour has come again. Lightning has struck twice, and this is the amazing follow-up to one of the greatest games ever. Beautiful, creepy, and sublimely designed, once they can manage to install it, you are sure to hear thank you. No. Some people think that wearing these tiny antlers must be emasculating, but they're wrong, aren't they? Of course they are. It's the sweater that makes you look gay. Coming up, multi-platform games to fill you with joy and empty your bank account. Deck the Halls with Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back. We were just curling up in front of the fire. Isn't that right, little bear? Morgan, that bear can't talk. He's dead, just like me, on the inside. Oh, I guess it is dead. Sorry, pagans, we killed your nature. You know, I know we come from different backgrounds, and we all believe in different things. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing above all else, that unites us at this time of the year. Multi-platform games. Yes, for once, Jews and Gentiles, Republicans and Democrats, PS2 and Xbox owners can all unite over one thing. Good games and the joy they bring us. So come closer. No, oh, closer still. Not that close and enjoy these special multi-platform games from us to you. It's only been a year and our sash-wearing sand monster slaying hero is back and he's gotten a little grim. Prince of Persia Warrior Within takes last year's exceptional title and refines it to make a game that focuses more on combat and integrated puzzles. This little romp to Kurdistan future is significantly more violent. The infinitesimal percentage of kiddies who picked up last year's copy maybe an inappropriate audience. But the more sophisticated gamer in your life may appreciate this little number that's sure to get lost in the GTA Halo Half-Life hoopla. Beautiful Joe 2 is now out for both the PS2 and the GameCube, making last year's triumph of originality immediately available for more people. We're back! Maybe not a good idea for those sycophants of hype, this is a great one for the connoisseur who's willing to step up to the challenge the game throws down. Plus, it's not just a retread of last year's number. There's new special moves and a whole new character. Trust us, this is a winner. Def Jam Fight for New York is our favorite of the new fighters because it's just so over the top. Fast paced and visually satisfying for the pain junkies, this game dishes out bare knuckled mayhem and pulls no punches. The special someone getting this better like profanity, hip-hop, and sadism. <laughs> when it comes to sports games, the distinction quality between Electronic Arts and ESPN is highly debatable. He made a great tackle there. What's not a point of contention is price. Sega's ESPN titles come in at $20, making buying multiple games much easier, which would be much appreciated by the sports gamer relying on you to keep him lost in a vicarious fantasy of athleticism. But if you want no holds barred endless fun in a world of carnage and shameless destruction, Burnout 3 is a winner, even if you come out the loser. 
This racing game puts the emphasis on playing dirty with glorious disregard for public safety or moral instruction. Ram opponents off the road or just try to create a smash up that even Interstate 5 couldn't handle. The game keeps on giving with so much depth and casual fun that even the most uptight DMV official will secretly love it. All that destruction just makes me cherish the beauty in this world. The beauty of good games, good friends, and good times. Cheers to that. Are you drinking gas? Maybe. Hmm. From all of us to all of you, happy non-denominational winter season. Non-denominational non winter season. I hate Adam Sessler. I'd rather suck at a urinal puck than play this game. Why does he get to play video games and review video games on a show about video games? Why does he get to spend every day with Morgan Webb? We've got a preview of the hottest new releases. Yeah! <laughs> Obsessed with video games? Watch X-Play with Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Next.